Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 3rd, and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop, Pacific Northwest to the upper right of this image. Kind of a complex low pressure center right off our coastline. It's got multiple areas where the low pressure centers are. It's fairly discombobulated, but it is spreading some precipitation up across the area. It's going to kick up the winds a little bit here as well as we go through the next couple of days. We'll take a look at that in some detail and we'll take a look at the pattern change coming up as we've got some cooler air flowing out across the Gulf of Alaska back into the Pacific Northwest and as always we'll take a look at the extended forecast Tempest Weather Station if you want an affordable one this is a great weather station highly recommended click on that link down below to save 10% off great smartphone app that comes with that and also I have a Facebook page makes it easier for some of my viewers to uh, share this with friends and family. So go ahead and click on the link down below, I'll leave it there here. So I'll post my daily updates here as well. Now, taking a look here at the combination Doppler radars, we had some heavy rainfall move across the Puget Sound this morning that actually woke me up. I went down to Three Tree Point very early this morning as well and took a look at some of the high tides going on there in the Puget Sound. The water is very high and there's not much wind at all and still some of those tiny waves were lapping up onto some of the properties. So that's going to be uh, something we're going to have to watch for tomorrow as well. Some bigger wave activity arriving as we go through the day today and tomorrow with the king tides could cause some coastal flooding issues. You see some precipitation moving Moving east of the mountains also. And again, there's some cooler air trapped in some select locations, especially across the higher terrain. You could be getting some wintry precipitation could make things slick. Uh, there's the coastal flood advisories up for the Puget Sound, uh, some of the Strait of Juan de Fuca there, Port Angeles included. You got the flood warning there for the coastal areas. Some pretty elevated tides out there. Definitely going to keep that water, uh, you know, potentially flooding some areas. If I click on that coastal flood warning, you see up to 3.25 feet above ground level. So that's pretty significant there. Um, and you can kind of see the impacts potentially of that. And also down the Oregon coast as well. I don't know why they left out between Lincoln City and Florence, but there is some big wave action coming in here in the King Tide. So I would kind of consider that for much of the Oregon coast. And again, the Winter Weather Advisory for Northeast Washington, portions of the Idaho Panhandle and Western Montana, including I-90 there. And that goes all the way on into the 5th. So check it out. The Severe Prediction Center has a marginal risk. Now it's a tornado threat across portions of California, but there is a wind threat and some of these stronger storms could move up some of the Oregon coast as we go through the day today. And if we go into tomorrow, you see that thunderstorm threat goes up the Washington coast a bit as well. So if we take a look at the common, uh, not the common, well, it is the combination of the Doppler radars, but this is the uh, composite reflectivity forecast by the RRFS. This is the model that's supposed to be taking over for the North American model in the high resolution rapid refresh. But you see, as we go through the day today, some of these stronger cells moving up towards Southwest Oregon and kind of see how that kind of continues as we go through this evening tonight. Some of these heavier downpours again with some lightning strikes and they could be packing a punch with some gusty winds. And then we scroll all the way on in through tonight and on in through the day tomorrow. You continue to see some of this precipitation coming across the region. Again, can't roll out a thunderstorm mainly for the coastal areas with that. Yeah, we got a few rounds to go before the system finally starts to kick through and then we start to deal with that next system approaching out of the north and west. Big pattern change. There was some cooler air aloft finally moving down into the area and this will bring some mountain snows and even some lower elevation uh, snowfall across maybe some of the higher hills in some of the convergent zone activity. More on that here in a moment. So this is looking at the European. This is what the forecast has been looking like the last few days. This was January 1st, the 18Z data. And if we scroll through here, I'm going to go ahead and take, a, uh, take you through it. Uh, you can see the next step, the low moves off the coast a little bit more, a little bit more. And there we go through uh, the yesterday morning's run, yesterday late morning, yesterday afternoon. You can kind of see how the low has been weakening and creeping off to the north and west. So the European model definitely trending towards this week or low. So we are, you know, it was never a major storm by any stretch of the imagination, but it was packing a little bit of some stronger wind uh, two, three days ago. It's backed off on that somewhat, as you can see, it's been pushing off. And this is just going to kind of be a blustery Sunday for most locations. I'll show you where some uh, locations are going to get a little bit more wind with this system. But again, it was never a major windstorm. And you can kind of see how that forecast has been downtrending over the last uh, two, three days. Now looking at Seattle. This is the most recent. You see the peak wind gusts between 22 and 41 miles per hour in the 10th and the 90th percentile. So again, just a blustery day. This is nothing special at all. A little bit stronger from maybe some of the Willamette Valley there. But again, on the low end of things, that's barely even noticeable here in the wintertime. It's just typical stuff. 
Uh, and now the king tides here, again, you can see we just came out of the highest tide here. We don't drop too much today. And then we bounce back tonight. But you can see the overnight, very low tides. And you see this about the 17 foot difference, for example, for Des Moines, Washington, as you go from what about 10.51 p.m. Uh, tonight on in through Sunday morning. Big tide change coming in. And if you have any winds at all, that can really exacerbate some of these king tides and push water up onto roadways and property. So do be careful for that. Cape Disappointment. The high tides are occurring right around noon. This is for today and this is for uh, on the day tomorrow. Close to 1 p.m. for Cape Disappointment and something similar for much of the Washington, Oregon coast. So as we look at the, across the Gulf of Alaska, and you can see some of this wave action moving up, and it is increasing as we go through the day today and as we go through the day on Sunday. But these aren't really that big of waves, all things considered, when you're dealing with fall and winter storms here across Pacific Northwest. But watch what happens as we start to get this long fetch. That's a big, important factor in some of the wave heights here. And you bring some of that strong wind across the surface as you go through this upcoming week, and we might get a nice shot of some wave action there as we we go through the day on Friday with kind of that west-northwest swell pushing down the westerly wave direction into the area. So you know, we'll have to watch out for that one also. And if we take a look at that 100 meter wind speed, you can really see again that long fetch as we go through this upcoming week. That's what's going to be driving those big waves towards the coastline. Now, here we go with the European model. We'll scroll through here and you kind of see things uh, turn southerly a bit more. The inversions are now starting to get scrubbed out across western Washington, western Oregon. And of course, we're just going to kind of keep these breezy conditions. And at least we won't be dealing with the foggy inversions. That was kind of hanging out for a while, three, four days, where the wind did not pick up much at my house, for example. And then you can kind of see that system kick through. And then we worry about that next system rolling in out of the north and west. See, southerly is still through the Puget Sound. The question is how active is this convergent zone going to be? How progressive will these westerlies and northwesterlies be when these uh, systems move through? And, you know, because that'll kind of play a uh, big into just who gets what kind of lower elevation snowfall potential. It, it looks a little bit similar to the one we got previously, but the, the, the westerlies and the northwesterlies are not quite as strong with this one. So I don't think we're probably going to see the significant impacts into the lower elevations as far as snow is concerned. Now, if we take a look at the European, we'll scroll through here in the timeline and you can see the system kick through. It's a quite a weak system at that. And then you see the Northwest flow start to arrive. We start to build up some mountain snow here as we go on into the midweek period. So that is good news. The problem is after that, the models continue to show some pretty dramatic ridging up across the West coast of North America. I'll show you the latest on that here in a moment. But in the short term, you gotta you know, concentrate on the positive here. And if you go through the next six days, we do build up some some pretty decent snow across the higher terrain. Of course, the Cascades are a very snowy place, so this is nothing too crazy, but it is, it's noticeable and it's gonna be fun as we go on in through next week. And if we take a look at 10,000 feet, I'm going to kind of show you what's going on above us. So you can see the system coming in right now. It's fairly warm aloft, not great for snow. But then as we go on in through Sunday night, that colder air starts to arrive right there. So that's going to help build up a bit of snow. And then the northwest flow really gets ramped up. You can see that cold air racing across the Gulf of Alaska and pointing towards the Pacific Northwest as we go through this upcoming week. So there we go. We build up the snow for a while. And then you can kind of see the ridging start to develop on the back side of that. So looking at snow depth in inches, we're going to scroll all the way through the 15 day period to see we do build it up as we go through Thursday, we're probably peaking, uh, you know, maybe get out there and try to hit the slopes as you go through this week coming up and Thursday might be the best day. But as we scroll on into the future, you see the snowpack, we're going the wrong way here as we go out to the mid portion of January, we're starting to lose what snowpack we did accumulate there across the higher terrain with the ridging and the lack of precipitation, maybe some warmer air aloft and whatnot, doing damage to our snowpack. And if we look at the artificial intelligence ensemble mean, again, we'll scroll through the trough currently impacting the area. And then we get the Northwest flow for the cooler systems as we go through the upcoming week. And then the ridge just continues to show in the extended run of the European artificial intelligence. And it hangs out for a while too, all the way through the 15th, 16th, 17th of January. Yeah, I keep hoping that will change, but again, there it is. 
And if we take a look at 15 day precipitation anomaly, you can clearly see the effects of that ridge as we head on into the mid portion of January. Uh, we are drought free across western Washington, much of western Oregon as well. You can see some areas of drought across eastern Washington here, but, uh, you know, big improvements uh, over the last few months and definitely since the summertime. So glad to see that. Eight to 14 day above normal signal there as we go through the 16th. And there's that below normal signal with the ridging developing. Climate Prediction Center is definitely on top of that. Check out my Patreon page if you like. Uh, hopefully you guys are having a good day out there. Um, I may do, well, I don't know how I'm going to play that out because the high tide is tomorrow morning. If it's going to be windy on the sound, I'm probably going to go check out some of the wave action and see if places are being affected. So I might have a little bit later release on the video tomorrow. But otherwise, hope you guys are having a good day and I will catch you guys in the next forecast.